Uh, you have five minutes. Can you please state the motion you're talking on? If you're for or against the motion, I will ring the bell at four minutes 30. Well, actually, it's against um, the resolution action sheet updates. There are two parts to it. First one, 6923, the independent audit. And the second one is uh, resolution 32223, Little Popong Road. The first one states, under the notes, no further update. As this remains unfunded and not in our forward plan, this matter will be removed from future updates. There's an old saying, out of sight, out of mind. Therefore, it appears council does not need to rescind this motion. It simply does not fund it. Therefore, there will be no audit. Will the community be advised why there is no funding for this audit? Hmm. However, in the minutes of the audit risk and improvement meeting, it states page eight of the report building formula for access charges mentions an additional $800,000 in revenue. Have we underreported $800,000? Answer, yes. In a quarterly budget review of the same paper, uh, another question by the ARIC committee was, why are our user fees and charges up? The reply, notice large amount of income for RFS compared to budgets. Was this channeling of income to the RFS the reason why we had to have the rate rise? So, mm. uh, perhaps council can massage some of this eight hundred thousand or money from the RFS to fund the audit. In a mandated resolution three two two twenty three, up on Little Popong Road, this road was constructed across private property, and now council maintains its full length of seven point seven kilometres including across private properties. The landowners of lots 69 and 70 now require compensation for the land acquired by council in accordance with the land acquisition, just terms Compensation Act 1991. Compensation for lot 69, apparently $17,000 for 2.019 hectares of land, which equates to $8,130 per hectare of rural land. I question if this $8,130 per hectare of ratepayer funds is an analyzed land value for rural land as required under the Land Acquisition Act. Can any of you councillors confirm that the amount is an analyzed land value for this parcel of rural land? Contrast this compensation claim to Little Potong Road in dollar terms with the Snowy Monero Regional Council compulsory acquisition in a very similar situation across rural properties, where the value of general of New South Wales was advised that no valuation has been undertaken on council's behalf on the basis they intend to rely on the value of general's determination and lots one, two, three, six, and nine, DB one, two, four, five, six, three, oh, were acquired through consent with the relevant landowners. The consent was provided on the basis that legal fees, where relevant, were paid, and the public road would benefit the landowners. The only other compensation agreed was with the former owner of Lot 6, where council agreed to reposition the fence and gate on the new boundary with Wearalong Road, when the acquisition of the road had been gazetted. It appears there was no money paid out to these landowners as compensation, unlike Little Popong Road. Analyzed land values for six similar properties were used as comparisons in the Wearalong Road acquisition and ranged in value from $1,437 per hectare to the highest value being $4,483 per hectare along Iron Monkey Road in Macra, a long way to draw of the 8,130 hectares through the top on the road. Resolution 32223 for Little Pop on the Road adds weight for all landowners without council road access to expect council to provide them with the same courtesy. 
On the other hand, there is now a real possibility that class actions will be brought against council by landowners to provide similar access based on these two acquisitions, namely Wirralong Road, Little Popong Road, by Snowy Monero Regional Council. You can keep going, yeah. Oh, sorry. sorry. No, no, you're up. Bob, uh, Council Stewart's allowed to just keep going. No, I mean, you, you, you won't be that long, will you, John? Oh, just one more second. Yeah, right, I agree. Go for it. The Wirralong Road acquisition was to provide one owner with legal access. Thereby, Council set a precedent for acquiring land for a public benefit and contrary to the conditions of Resolution 178 which I was informed in writing by Council was never received. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any questions? Um, no. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Um, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Sorry. Um, Mr. Glano has raised a, a a bunch of very complex and technical matters in, in that. Right. Um, would it be um, practical, um, I guess, question to the general manager uh, for uh, council to have a look at those issues and to respond to councillors at a briefing as to the nature of them, please? Right. And perhaps, Mr. If, Plano, if you could provide a copy of your... Those questions? Your... your Words to council. Oh, I'll just try to mark because I've got a few scribbles on. If that's all that's right. fine. Yeah. Yeah. And then you off. can present it. I'll give it to send an email to us that we um and we'll be able to answer those questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I resume the meeting at uh, one o nine. Uh, any disclosures of interest by councillors? No. Okay. Uh, item six matters dealt by exception. Uh, Mr. Hogan. Screen. Uh, I'd just like to list that the, the following the following items in both the open and confidential papers uh, I'm recommending for approval by council as here in the meeting. One is 9.1.4, review of the Stone Monero Regional Council Compliance and Enforcement Policy. Uh, 9.1.5, the extension of the expression of interest for Snow River Hostel. 9.2.1, the monthly funds management report, February 2024. 9.3.1, the Snowy Monero draft transport management plan. 